Je ne sais pas pourquoi je parle français, mais c'est juste pour la mise en place. Forget it. I thought I'd do a French introduction because the movie is predominantly in French, but we're not going to do that. I'm not going to bombard you with this BS. So, let's just get on with it. Another day, people, with another review. And just in case you didn't know, it's Brass Tax in this bitch. You already know now. New subscribers, welcome. Channel's doing well. Can't thank you guys enough. Existing subscribers have been there from day one. I love you guys. And we're ready to take this 4K format full steam ahead. Talking about the movie, Robert Zemeckis directed it. He's directed some of my favorite movies. We're talking Back to the Future, we're talking Castaway, we're talking Forrest Gump. Main actors, Brad Pitt and Marion Cotillard. I'm sorry if I butchered the name, but what can I do? It's set in 1942, World War II period. And what it is, is you've got two of the most deadliest spies uh, posing as a married couple to take on a top secret mission. Now what ends up happening is they actually end up falling in love with each other. And what then ensues, there's a little bit of action. And further down the line, Brad Pitt is told by his superiors that his now wife could be conspiring with the enemy. So now he has 72 hours to prove her innocence. This movie sounds like a spy thriller, but what it actually is, is a romance thriller. It's a romance first. Now, the latter half of what I said about the movie in terms of proving his wife's innocence is only the third act of the movie. So the first two acts really is all about falling in love. The trailer gives the impression that it's a spy thriller, but what it actually is, is English patient meeting Casablanca. The aesthetic of the movie is, seems and feels very authentic. You forget that you're watching a modern day movie based on older times. You, you, you feel like you're transported in that time period. It has a uh, very good tension in parts. There is a scene, one of the soldiers, one of the enemy soldiers notices that he perhaps has worked with Phosphor or what have you. So he asks him to write the formula for Phosphor. And that scene itself is tense as hell. So there are really tense moments. Some of the action is pretty good, but there's not a lot of it. The good and bad is that it pays homage to Casablanca in a lot of ways. It, there's a lot of beats of that movie. Uh, so obviously Robert Zemeckis is a fan, but I think it, it did a bit too much for my liking. I found the movie a little slow at parts, especially in the second act. When I was going through it, I felt like I, I did check my, my watch a couple of times, my Apple Watch. It was, it was dragging on a little bit. Now, the, the love story between the two of them is sweet, but I think it's not really what I was expecting. It is interesting, but it, but it's, but it, it drags on. You know, the, the last act of the movie is intense, but I feel it's a little rushed. I was expecting the third act to be predominantly the whole movie, but it isn't. It is what it is. It's a, it's a, a decent movie. I am glad I watched it but it's not something I could actually watch again. And there is something off-putting. Now, it could be my imagination, but I think Brad Pitt's accent, and when he's speaking French, seems like it's been dubbed over. And I noticed it because something just didn't seem quite right. And it took me out of the experience. And to me, it's an okay movie. I guess it's worth a watch. I'm glad I didn't watch it in the big screen. And that's really all I've got to say about it. Would I recommend you buy it based on that purpose? I'd probably recommend you rent it, to be honest. But that's pretty much my review on the movie. Now, I once again watched this movie on the OLED with, you know, the home theater set up. One note, I am not entirely sure about the visual effects. It could be 2K, it could be 4K, but I read in a couple of different places that it was actually 4K. But if I'm wrong about that, I apologize beforehand. But at point of me doing this review, I'm sorry, it's like, I'm too fast. Your boy gets things far too early before the information even comes up. That being said, let's just get on with it. Shot in 6K and 8K. Visual effects, 4K. Digital intermediate, 4K. DTS HD master audio 5.1 i'll be honest with you guys i had to watch this movie twice the first on the oled and back again at home 
in parts. Primarily because when I first saw this, I was very, very disappointed. This movie is shot in 6K and 8K. I'm expecting Revenant or Sully or Lucy level detail. I'm expecting a reference quality transfer. It is not a reference quality transfer, shockingly. But what it is, is, is a very good, good transfer. It's a noticeable improvement over the Blu-ray, for sure. The clarity of this movie and the detail of this movie is very good. You notice little hair strands, the scene where Marion is trying to seduce Brad Pitt. And you see, not that I was looking so hard, but you know, you see the beads of sweat and everything going down her neck. And you're just like, wow, that looks very, very nice. There are certain indoor shots. You know, it's set in that time period, so a lot of things look beautiful as hell uh, in terms of paintings on the walls, the building structure, the colors on the building. Everything looks quite crisp. You see little strands of uh, Brad Pitt's hair and, and no homo. Brad Pitt aging well, huh? But the 4K, you're beginning to see a crack in Brad Pitt. You're beginning to see that. You beginning to see that. Now, I don't know what cream and moisturizer he uses, but I want a piece of it. That's what I'm saying. I want a piece of that moisturizer. Whatever fountain of youth shit you're using, send it my way. God damn. But yes, there is a great uptick in detail for sure. Black levels are very good. Very good, actually. There is a bit where they're getting ambushed and they're hiding in a dark room. Brad Pitt is hiding in a dark room and you can make out everything very clearly. So the black levels are pretty good. The HDR is good. Uh, I was expecting more pop, more vibrancy, uh, but it's a very, very natural looking transfer. I was expecting to be blown away right at the beginning because what happens is Brad Pitt kind of lands in the desert and you would think that the desert would really stand out. It would be one of the standout moments and it does look very clear and it does look sharp. It's not going to blow you away, but you will appreciate the added detail and some of the colors. There is a wider color for sure in the overall movie, so you are going to appreciate that, but like I said, it's not going to blow you away in that respect. One of the things I did like about this movie is there is very nice three-dimensional depth. You can see layers and layers. Like I said, I was on the desert thing with Brad Pitt. When he has landed there, you can see that there is distance between figures, yeah? Foreground, you see him and in the background, you can see that there is a very nice sense of depth in a lot of areas, especially when they're walking into some of the environments. Some of the buildings, like I said before, some of the rooms, you can, it does have a nice three-dimensional feel that way. I did notice that there were some artifacts, especially in the desert scenes. I tried it on both systems, on my TV and my friend's TV. There was a little bit of banding in the sky in the desert scenes. So that's something which kind of took me out of the experience a little bit. In terms of the visual effects, the CGI, I couldn't really tell you what was CGI and what wasn't, which is probably a good thing if any were used at all, because nothing looked out of place at all. So overall, guys, it is a noticeable upgrade over the 1080p for sure, but it's not gonna blow you away. Like seriously, quite disappointing in that respect. If you're a fan of Brad Pitt, then I would uh, recommend picking up this version. It is the definitive version to get because it's the best looking version on a number of levels. It just does not hit that reference mark. It definitely is a decent mix. The sound quality is pretty good. When the guns go off, you're gonna hear it. It has nice depth on loud scenes. It's like the louder it gets, the better depth it has, but I think the sound mix misses a lot of subtleties, the little things, which you would definitely notice on a 7.1 or a, an obviously an Atmos track. The dialogue for the most part was decent, but there were some scenes where I had to really listen. But it's not bad sound, people. It's generally a very good track but it could have been better in my opinion. I still don't know why they did a 5.1. 5.1 sound is good. The surround sound is decent, but because it's a 5.1 track, I did feel like some of the subtleties got lost in translation. It's nothing to avoid just because of the sound. It is good sound. It just could have been better sound and it could have actually been a better mix in my opinion. That's really all I got to say about that. <laughs> movie is a one-time a one watch for me. I'm never going to watch it again. The transfer is decent. There's no special features in this uh, 4K Blu-ray. You know, if you like your Casablanca and you like your English Patient and you like those kind of movies, then I guess this is the one to get. Guys, that's really all I got to say about it. Hit the like button. If you like this video, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching and I'm going to catch you next time.